Hello everyone and welcome to our today's tutorial on cute looks. We're so happy to have you here in our tutorial class. So um, we already have um, our course introduction about what I'm going to be teaching you. It's not like our regular course that we have um, dressmaking. Today I'll be taking you on your sewing machines and different types of your sewing machine. Um, before I continue on this section, um, like this video. Turn on your notification bell, subscribe if you're joining us for the first time, drop your comments at the comment section and follow us on Facebook. So I won't be taking much of your time, I'll go straight to this course. I'll be starting with the introduction of the sewing machine. Um, as a learner or somebody who has been into the sewing world already, most of us know that this machine in front of me is the machine we always have as a starter. Um, majority of the parts of this machine we also have in our industrial sewing machine. So I will be starting with the introduction of the sewing machine. Yes, the sewing machine is a machine we use to make our clothes, to make it finish, to make a good finishing and then have our garments worn on our body. So I won't, that is about the introduction of the sewing machine. We all know what it's used for. That one aside, I will go straight to the types of sewing machine. We all know we don't have one type of sewing machine even when it comes to the industrial sewing machine so we have the industrial and we have the banner uh, with the industrial we have the one for sewing we have the one for weaving we have the one for embroidery um, we have the one for buttonhole and even the one for embroidery we have the one for phonics we have the one for tinko making and for the buttonhole we have the one for suits like the jackets we have the one for trouser buttonhole and we have the one for shirts um, back to the sewing machine, since I've already told you we have two types of sewing machine, the industrial and the manual sewing machine, I will be going to the parts and functions of the sewing machine. This section is very, very important for anybody that makes clothes, for you to know the parts and the functions of your sewing machine. So. From your own angle, it's coming from the right side, and from my own angle, it's coming from the left side because I'm sitting at the right part. So concentrate if you don't know the parts of your sewing machines and their functioning. I'm going to start from this angle here. Here I have the machine facing. This helps to protect the inner part of the front side of this sewing machine. So you see it here, that's why we have this place covered up. So all this place will be having those um, entering inside of them. So I will be going to the turn sticks. This helps us to hold back our thread. You can see it helps us to hold the thread. And it's not meant to be too tight or too loose. Just a bit balanced so the thread can move. See, while you sew, the thread can move comfortably. And here, we'll call this place... This place you see we have here. We we'll call it the relax tension. This helps the, the the thread tension. I mean, this helps to take your thread up and down while you sew. Can you see? Without this, your thread cannot move with your needle. And this this is called the presta foot holder. You use this to bring down your presta foot, or you take it up. You can see it's, it's meant to be not too flexible and not too stiff. You see around here. And then down to this area here, I have my needle which is very important you can see my needle and for you to be able to place your needle watch carefully if you're always having issues with your needle this inner part of your needle here that you have this curved side is meant to face the outer part of your needle of your machine and this other area that is looking a bit swollen and down here a bit um, flat is meant to face the inside part of your machine and this is called the needle holder you can see it has a space inside can see and this is called the needle holder lever this lever is meant to go up and down when you're sewing anything called lever even we as human beings we know the lever is very important to us if this stops working this machine cannot sew anything or even work with the needle so you can see if I want to put my needle carefully you look at it you can see I'm facing this place at the wrong side I will turn it carefully to face outside this place is meant to be here and then I'll take my needle holder and hold here carefully down and this is my presta foot like I said without this the material cannot be held down to sew 
if you use that the machine will just be there moving and the material is not going anywhere because this is not holding the material and this is the machine plate and inside of here you will see the, the machine teeth inside there this helps to move the material back and forth can you see it takes some material front and back front and back so you've seen it it makes your material go front and back or you call it back and forth so you see I'll take this so you see it's holding it down that's the press star foot without it this material cannot hold so you see and then the, the machine teeth takes this can you see front and back definitely move can you see without that seat this will not function so that's it about the machine seat I'm going to come to this side of the machine where we have the controller we'll call this part of the machine the mesh the stitch gauge or you call it the stitch controller or you call it the stitch lever without this control your machine cannot move up and down with the teeth. Watch this. If I pull this at the middle here, my machine, is, my material is not going anywhere. Can you see? Except I start pulling and pulling and pulling, which is very stressful. And here around this area where we have our seven over six, that's where we have our regular stitch. Can you see? It's moving normal. Let me pass this so you see what the stitch will look like. So this is it. I'll bring this down and start running my stitch carefully. See what I'm telling you? My needle is not properly fixed. That's why you should know some part of your machine. Since it's not properly fixed, I couldn't stitch. And now I've fixed it. See? It's going to move front and back. And then you can sew. You see? So without this, you cannot move this machine. So this is it. You control here. It moves. You use down here, which is the down part of the machine, of this um, machine um, stitch lever. You use, your, use that as your gathers. It keeps moving. Let me even make it easy for you so you see what I'm showing you. This is it. So this is it. I've connected my ruler and my shorter under. I'm going to be using my stitch gauge to see. You see a regular stitch is 7 over 6. You see what the stitch looks like. Just simple. Can you see? Then when I want to use the gathers, you can see how neat your regular stitch should be. Then I'm, when I'm using the gathers, which is the simplest stitch ever, you see how loose so this is how loose the stitch is going to be you see the difference between here and here this one is very loose and when you're using the upper parts around your stitch gauge can you see it's not moving again it's too tight that's the angle where we knot our sewing can you see and the funny part you can actually still use this angle for your buttonhole watch something and then I'll take it up again because it's tight. So you see, I'm going all the way. It's just that it's not going to look so neat like that of the main sewing machine for button hook. Can you see? Can't lose anyhow. It's very tight. So that's it. And up here, we have our spool pin, or you call it the thread holder. We use this to hold our thread on our sewing machine. Here is the machine block clip. We use it to close the face of the machine block. And you see, if I open this out, let me open this carefully. So you see, this is inside of the machine block. We always oil this place so it doesn't look so dry and to affect the movement of some of the things inside of the machine. So I'm going to be knotting this back. This is called the clip of the machine face so and this is the hand wheel without this you can't wheel this machine so you can see that every part of this machine without each other they cannot function this is it 
like we have some of all those um our shoulder sewing machine whereby they don't have the wheel to work with they carry it on their shoulder to work for amendment without this area they cannot move the machine you can actually move this machine with the down part but you find out that it will cut your thread first watch the thread has gone off but with this you can manage this and move carefully without having your thread to cut off so I'm done with this area I'm going to go to the under part of this and tell you the function part function of the parts so before that Mm, these two guys are good friends. They cannot do without each other. This is called a reeler. We reel on this, just like we have the thread up here. We reel on this, so we put inside of this to be able to sew. This is the thread that the thread that stays under the sewing machine for it to be able to stitch from the under while we sew from the upper part. This is called a reeler, and this is called the shuttle. This shuttle houses this for it to be able to sew. We connect it this way. Please don't connect your villa on your short this way, not from the right side. Your machine will continue to jump. Can you see? This is wrong. It's not meant to be reeling this way. It's meant to reel this way. So I'm going to bring this out and show you. It's meant to come this way. Your thread should come from this angle. And you hear the, you heard that sound? It's meant to stay inside and that sound. And so that's it for these two. And here... I have, let me disconnect this, this is called the shuttle carrier, so many of you don't know what this is about, this name of this, the duty of this is to carry this while it sews, can you see, it's meant to hold this down inside of it, and this is called the shuttle chamber, with this, we take this And connect to this part and then we take the shuttle chamber and connect it here and this is called the shuttle clip the shuttle chamber clip is meant to clip to hold this and you see without holding this this will not move and then we take this and connect to this and it must make it sound to tell you that it is connected to it did you hear the sound so that's how it's meant to be when you're sewing and this is called the chamber housing this here is called the chamber housing without this these two in here cannot function and they're talking about the machine jaw please do not mistake the teeth for the jaw the jaw is under here that's why when you're sewing there's a kind of sound or when you're shuttle is not well connected to the shuttle carrier you or the shuttle chamber you hear a very heavy sound that breaks your needle and is likely to hook your machine whereby the um, the needle lever cannot hold the needle anymore everything will just freeze until when a technician manage this that is when you can have this to use again and then i forgot to tell you something this place the presta foot this is the presta foot lever without this we cannot work with this. You can see this is the Presta foot knot. It holds the Presta foot to the machine. You can see. Can you see? And then you connect this carefully inside of it. And then we and then knot it inside carefully. When you open the machine facing, that's where you have to see all these things the way they move inside without them you cannot function around this area so that's it with the offside of the machine I'm going to be coming to the downside so I'll explain carefully about the downside alright guys and this is the leg of the machine mm -hmm. so around this area this is where we place our leg it's called the paddle as I will place our leg on the machine to be able to paddle front and back so you see it goes front and back, front. Can you see? It goes front and back, front and back. Why you will? Can you see? So after that, we have the machine wheel. You can see why this wheel. It helps the upper side because it's connected to be able to sew. Can you see? It? Can you see? Once they disconnect, <laughs> it's on its own. Can you see? That's why I said at the upper side where we have the hand wheel. 
like the ones we have um, on the street that they carry, carry on the shoulder and move around. They can walk on their own without the wheel. You can see it's moving on its own without the wheel. Can you see it's not connected without the wheel. But once it's connected with, with the wheel, the both wheel, both up and down must work together. You can see the elastic has disconnected. So I'm going to be connecting it back so they can work together because they are connected. So this is it. Good. And this is the, um, the paddle pole. Without this, the machine paddle cannot move. Watch, can you see? This up and down. Without this, this is not moving. Without this, this cannot move at all. And it has a ball inside of it that helps it to move inside. And if, if it's not flexible inside, you cannot work with this. And this can be disconnected while you're sewing. Can you see? And then, it will seem as if your machine has spoiled. Can you see the ball inside? And then you seem as if your machine has spoiled. No, it's not spoiled. All you have to do is to bring it back. You see, just bring it back and wheel it. Instead of start calling for help, you just keep wheeling it. So you see? And done. You still have it together. So you see? Don't be afraid of that angle. So I'm going to show you how to connect your elastic. I won't be cutting this, but I'll show you. Some of us always have issues on how to connect our elastic. What you do, instead of connecting your elastic from this angle, you see, instead of you taking it from the downside, you take it from the up, carefully from this upside here, pass your elastic, bring it out under this area, and then pass through this place, not here. Pass through this area, go to the other side to meet it, and then connect it, and you can easily stay at any angle you like, and then you connect this inside. It needs to be tight so that you won't be having a loose stitch or having it to cut all the time. So you see, while your machine stick, your machine elastic is meant to be tight and well connected. If not, you keep pulling off. I'm going to set this very well. Don't worry about this place. It's not a must. You must pass your thread, um, your rope or your elastic or whatever you're using, connecting your two wheels together. Here is not so important when you want to do that. So, guys, I'm sure I've done a good job explaining on how to use your machine, the parts and functions of your machine. So, the next is to show, tell you how to maintain your sewing machine why you work with it so you won't have your machine break down all the time i'll be telling you or teaching you the tools and how to maintain them while you sew so that is it and then up here forgot to tell you something here this is what we call the machine housing i'm going to disconnect this from down here it's called the machine housing when you turn it, it might be dusty it might be neat but make sure your machine housing is always oiled so you won't be having it break down. So this is what we call the machine housing. And as well under here, you see, very neat. So you can see well oiled. They're not meant to be looking dry. If not, your machine could break down. So you see, these are all total combination and they call machine housing. Without all these guys, this machine cannot function or do anything. Can you see? While I move, they are moving. Can you see? So if they don't move, you're not sewing anything. Each of them are moving. Observe, the both three of them are moving. Without them, you can't sew. So that's it on parts of your sewing machine. Okay, guys.